Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Tactical Friday. You heard from him this past Monday, and I am blessed to be bringing Ben Albert back to the show as we chop up a little bit more about some self-development aspects that we talked about Monday. Ben, welcome back to the show, my friend. Zach Knight, Tactical Friday. Brother, I'm excited, man. This is fun. Man, I'm super excited about this because I know we were talking a lot about marketing and that's your background, but we really dove into the conversation about self-development, how you got out of a little bit of that hole you were in and how you started setting yourself up for success every day. Um, and I really, I think this is a fascinating piece. I talk a little bit about my own journey in this realm. I have over the, the series of this podcast, but I love hearing more about how do we take action in the morning, set the day with intentionality, get motivated for a long day, a long grind, all those hours that we're working on uh, for ourselves. And I would love to know, man, how do you set yourself up for success each day? Absolutely, brother. And first, I want to acknowledge you. I talk about marketing, personal branding, LinkedIn all the time. I loved that you and I got to talk about self-development earlier in the week, um, because at the end of the day, if you're not leading yourself, you say this in the podcast, if you're not leading yourself, helping yourself, leading yourself first, I can give you all the tactics in the world. You're going to fall on your face. So I wanted to acknowledge that I really appreciate that we talked about that and not just on the marketing aspect. Um Dude, my mornings are rigid. I'm actually grumpy if I don't accomplish my morning routine. Um, but as a lot of us already know, if you can get some quick wins first thing in the morning, even before you check your phone, social media, email, you're going to crush it. Um, I could talk all day. I, I actually am curious as to what your morning routine looks like, Zach. We, uh, can we go over our morning routines together? Yeah, man, I, I think it's such a, a fascinating thing because I think a lot of people, um, actually did the uh, talked about this on an episode. It's probably episode 100, and this is going to be uh, a couple hundred after that. And I got called out by a guest, and he's like, "That sounds like you're just checking the block every morning. Are you being intentional <laughs> about what you're doing?" And I'm like, "Uh, yeah, sure." He's like, "No, you're not." And literally on the show, so like a big piece of my morning, man, it's all about the intentionality. Like, don't do a piece of it just to check the block. Um, you know, there's a Admiral McRaven speech um, a while back about uh, make your bed every morning. Start with that small victory. You mentioned that small win, right? Make your bed every morning. There's your first win of the day. For me, I'm in the gym. I'm up at 4 a.m. in the gym by 5 a.m. every single day. That's my mindset piece. Let me get my mind right. I can check out. I can go listen to some loud music, go run way too much and get the cardio in. But um, I think this is something we have in common. It's all about gratitude right? Each day I kind of rotate different pieces, but I start the day writing three things I'm grateful for in my mirror. So every time I go to the bathroom during the day, right there in the mirror, I'm grateful for this, this, and this today. And it reminds me, but it's something that happened yesterday where I'm still feeling it. And that was a big thing that that guest pointed out is uh, Jordan Montgomery. Um, I remember it very vividly because he like straight hit me with it. He's like, are you being intentional about what you're feeling in that moment of gratefulness? Or are you just thinking about the roof over your head? There are days I'm really grateful I still have a roof over my head, but some days I just wrote it because it was something, right? So I think for me, it's like that gratefulness kind of sets it off and then it leads into that intentionality. What am I intentionally doing and wanting to receive from every piece of my day moving forward? I love it. Dude, gratitude is everything. We, I, Brad Lee says that he's been on your show. Would you rather have a million dollars or another day to live? I'd take the day to live. The fact we get to live this life, the fact my sperm was chosen is a blessing in itself, man. It, there's so much to be grateful for. And when you have that intentionality, everything in your day and your in, your in your entire life goes better, man. It's incredible. Yeah, and it's interesting, man, because a lot of people don't have, it honestly took me um, going to Afghanistan, losing some guys, um, mm. and coming back, hitting my rock bottom back in uh, 2019, 2020, about the same time frame um before i had the perspective of gratefulness and i think a lot of people i'd love to know your feedback on this but a lot of people take it uh, take for granted so much in this world where you know you grow up and in america it's a totally different world here man. like we have all these luxuries that we don't necessarily uh, see across seas and overseas and in other parts of the world so uh, how do you maintain that piece? Like, is, is that part of like coming back to reality for you in the morning as you're setting up your day in this routine? Are you focused in that world? It's hot out. You know, bull, dude, it's, it's in the nineties, right? I've got some AC blowing on me right now. I have a good ass life. I have zero complaints. And even 
the poor in America have way more opportunity than millions, if not billions of people elsewhere. That is not beyond me. We have it so good. And you're an asshole if you don't realize that. And it's really amazing how many people like don't, man. I, it's funny. Um, and this is something where um, we talked about David Goggins on Monday. He talks about all these, you know, put yourself through the suffering aspects. And brother, when I got to Afghanistan, it was like negative 10 and eight inches of snow. And I left is 130 degrees. It's like, I've seen the two extremes, no hard structures around. I really value air conditioning. Like, <laughs> let's be real about this. I really love air conditioning. I love uh, plumbing. You never realize <laughs> until after a year of porta potties or a hole in the ground, you really value a, a bathroom. You know what I mean? And I think a lot of people don't understand that and kind of lose that perspective a little bit. Yeah. Dude, did, did you hear the, the fire alarm just going off? Time to run, vacate the yeah. building real quick. It, someone's <laughs> cooking, I'm smelling it, and I get to smell fresh food. And maybe the fire alarm goes off mid podcast. What a great, what a great problem to have that I have a fire alarm protecting me. Like we've got it so good. I'm curious if that came up though on because it, I can hear it. I'm wondering if if they can hear it at home. <laughs> Super faint. Like I heard just two beeps uh, real quick and hear a little bit of it, man. But um, that's the beauty of it. Hopefully somebody's cooking something good over there, <laughs> dude. I hope so. I hope so because they're wrecking the podcast. No, but right. I love them. I love them. <laughs> Man, well, tell us a little bit about what that morning routine looks like for you. How do you delve into it? Are you a journaler? Are you a reader? Are you a self-reflection type? What does your morning routine actually look like? So I'm going to take like 10 years worth of self-discovery and try to squeeze it into five minutes, which is impossible. Um, but dude, listen, guys, if you can take just one aspect of this and implement it immediately, you will start to move the needle. So, so take even just one aspect or them all. Um, I've kind of changed it based around what I need and what serves me, but it all started with Hal Elrod's Miracle Morning. Have you heard of Savers, the Miracle Morning? I have, and I'm actually very familiar with Miracle Morning. Cool. It's a great, so I, great overall uh, concept. So I'm preaching to the choir. I'll give the short version, um, but Hal tells the story great. The very short version is he was looking for the golden ticket, the perfect way to start the morning, and he found that there's not one perfect way, but he found six major ways, and I've even added to his six, but his six that I have been doing for 10 years, um, savers. So S is for silence, deep breathing, relaxing. I use an app called Othership, not an affiliate with it, Othership. It's a breathwork app. And they basically, uh, it's like breath work mixed with music. So you can have fun as you breathe into your morning. A is um, affirmations. I have 10 I spit out every morning, but it's all about being an open channel of creative ideas. I'm good enough now and I'm only getting better. I attract what I need, so on and so forth. That changes based on what serves me at the time. V is visualization. I visualize two things. I visualize the actions and the tactics and the things I'm going to accomplish today and the smile on the people's faces when I knock it out of the park and I visualize myself in the future. Don't have a vision board, think the vision boards are silly, that's just me. Um, Cause it, it's all the daily vision that really gets you to that vision board level. E is exercise, you crush it, man. Working out at four or five in the morning impresses me, man. I, wear, I, I wake up a little later than that but I'll be doing jump rope, burpees, anything to get the blood flowing. Um, R is reading. I, For me, it's nonfiction, something that can get my critical thinking going, you know, get my brain going. And then S is for scribing. For me, I take my journaling very seriously. I have multiple journals. Um, I actually have a, a remarkable tablet, again, not an affiliate, but it's just one tablet. So I have five journals and one tablet, but every morning, five things I'm grateful for, 10 new ideas. So I come with, up with over 3,500 new ideas a year. If you write down 10 new ideas a morning, you become a idea machine. And I do something called homework. Uh, Matthew Dix invented homework for life. 
and it's where you write down the most story worthy moment of the day. You're supposed to do it the day of, I do it in the morning, but the most story worthy moment of the previous day. So I have memories, I have gratitude, I have ideas. What I do in addition to house stuff is um, I write down one person I wanna help. So I reach out to someone I haven't spoken to. I make an introduction. I want to help one person a day. I urge everybody at home, if you just help one person a day, you'll help tens of thousands of people in your life. I drink two freaking glasses of water. I chug it. I want to be hydrated after not being hydrated all night. Um, and the one thing that's really been rocking and rolling that I recently added is the one word exercise. And I actually encourage people to do this as well. Um, you just choose anything. So there's a lamp in front of me. And then you create a 90 second keynote that intersects storytelling and values around that one word. So no matter what comes up in life, you get better at speaking extemporaneously. I've only been doing it for a week and I already feel more confident. That's what I do, but I urge people, this is not a golden ticket. Life is not a key. It's a combination code, and everybody has a different combination. So if you can implement one of those, I guarantee you'll be better. If you implement multiple, that's great. Maybe you have crazy kids running around and you can't do it. If you can implement it throughout the day, maybe you do it differently. If you work, wake up at 4, it's going to look different than if you wake up at 8. So I don't want people to think, hey, this Ben said this, I need to do it. I don't want to discourage, I shouldn't be discouraging people, Zach, because I actually think it's kick ass. But I don't want people to think that they have to do nine things every morning to be successful. Do just one, do just three, you will immediately see a difference in your life, I guarantee it. Yeah, and that's a big piece to recognize, right? It's not like do all this stuff and have this big shift because that's not sustainable. And I mean, they talk about it in the nutrition world, all of a sudden people could do this keto diet and it's like three weeks and it's like, you're killing yourself or 75 hard. Um, a lot mm -hmm. of people did 75 hard. Um, obviously Andy for and a lot of that aspect of it, love the dude. But at the end of the day, is that sustainable as a diet plan? No. Is that sustainable as a life plan? Probably not for a lot of people, right? Not for me, but man, <laughs> um, I think I made it about. 20 something days and i'm like i'm going back to not that um i mean that's the hard part right is people have recognized a lot of this isn't necessarily sustainable if you just lump it on all at once so taking a, a tidbit journaling is a big piece that i do but i only do it like twice a week um i just took up piano about a year ago so i play the piano a couple times mm -hmm. days a week is my like reflection time more of that it's not silent but it's silence right and then the gym you know there, there's so many aspects but it all rotates, right? It's not like you have to do all of it in one day and spend five hours as a monk in the morning. Not necessarily feasible, except no. Tim Ferriss, right? So, I mean, it's not, those things aren't applicable to everybody. So I love how you kind of broke it down in that aspect where it's not that like silver bullet, you're absolutely do this and this is going to solve your life. It's like, take aspects, take nuggets of each piece of this. It's like reading a book, take one nugget and run with it, right? Implement it see how much it improves your life. If it doesn't work, throw it away. If it does work, keep it and just keep building on that. So I love that motivation that you have attached to that, man. And um, is there anything else that, that you, really gets you hyped for the day? Is there anything like I, I personally, uh, my alarm every morning is the uh, Rocky theme song. I hate those stupid songs or the alarm noise. I'm like the Rocky theme song is my hype songs every morning. That's what I wake up to. Is there anything that gets you hyped to get your feet on the floor in the morning? You know, dude, it's just my morning routine. Uh, I'm excited for it. I I like taking that time. I like that. The moment I open my laptop and I open my phone, I have plenty of clients I need to serve, and sometimes it's stressful. So I love that I have that moment with myself. Um, I roll out of bed ready to go. I'm not perfect. We talked about it uh, on Monday. Sometimes I take the day off, but I'm so grateful that I get to have a morning and I get to serve these clients and I have a beautiful girlfriend and life is good, brother, dude. I got no complaints. I love it, man. Good to hear that. And if anybody wants to follow along with that journey with your life, everything that's happening, connect with you, what's the best way for them to reach out and uh, be a part of this journey with you, my friend? Dude, brother, can I do one more thing? A short analogy to leave the audience. So yeah, let me ask you, um, brushing your teeth. How many times are you supposed to brush your teeth a day? 
Is it like 18 or 20 or something like that? <laughs> no, two times, right? That's what they say. Two times for healthy teeth or something like that. Two times for healthy teeth and approximately how long. It doesn't have to be perfect. Like two minutes. My thing, I have the, one of the battery operator or rechargeable um, one. So it's timed fast. for me. Yeah. Oh, dude, I Just love that. Yeah. <laughs> dude, twice a day, two minutes. Who's going to have better teeth? The person that brushes their teeth twice a day for two minutes, 365 days a year, or the person that goes to a teeth brushing seminar, vigorously brushes their teeth for eight hours straight, and then calls it a day, calls it a year, doesn't brush their teeth the rest of the year. Let's be real. Who's going to have better teeth? I'm hoping the one that puts the time into it because I brush my teeth a lot for it not to pay off. <laughs> Dude, if you're vigorously, you, you, vig, you might even do damage to your teeth if you do too much all at once. So the reason I give this analogy is all I want to leave the listeners is even if you just take two minutes a, twice a day, I recommend more like 10 to implement just one thing you heard today or one thing you heard on Monday. Who's going to be more successful in 365 days? The person that listened to this podcast and didn't implement a single thing or the person that took even just one tip and changed their life with it. Dude. It's huge, man. That one little tip, taking a run. We said it on Monday, balbertmarketing.com, balbertmarketing.com. You can click on all links. You can find me. I, I want to be omnipresent. No specific platform, brother, sister, wherever you hang out. Reach out to me and uh, let's be friends. I love it. Definitely encourage everybody to do that. Reach out. Um, obviously, Ben's a great dude, making a great impact on the world. And overall, brother, I just appreciate your time and everything you're bringing to us, my friend. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, Zach. I love it. Appreciate you.